Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and there are quite a few things to talk about today, mostly the giant mountain of reruns due to Golden Week. So Golden Week, if you don't know, is a series of holidays in Japan that are all scrunched together in a very short amount of time, and thus it's often just a point where people will take a vacation, there's no school, and people will have a lot of extra free time. So that's why if it seems absurd that they just put like every rerun under the sun <laughs> into the game right now, that that's why. So even if you don't have as much free time as someone on vacation, odds are you've got something to gain from <laughs> at least a few of the reruns that are going on. So just aside from the seasonal events, a bunch of the box events, Dragon Story, Genesis Story, and the Mobius Tower are all rerunning. Just a quick note about Mobius is that they have taken the gems out in Japan and replaced them with rainbow shards. So at least in my opinion, that lowers the priority, unless you really, really want to get Gilfred, that lowers the priority of Mobius relative to a lot of the other options for your time. That being said though, if you are relatively close to being able to max limit break a character via elemental shards, you might you could get a decent chunk by devoting a fairly small amount of time to the early Mobius levels just because if you've got a map clear unit like say Nero who is part of the beginner banner then you're pretty much set uh probably up to at least four or ten or so and around 11 12 is where they start to get really really mechanics-y and thus more time consuming but yeah that is all I wanted to say about the intro stuff so next only thing I want to talk about Lucian Magisto's challenge board a little bit and then I'll just go over some of the reruns and some of the options and then move on to the banners and you know you know the drill you wait actually this fight is almost over so I think I'm just gonna let it play out just because I really really did not enjoy this boss at least not from an autoing perspective from from manuals is pretty fun but it's always weird to me when they make a boss fairly tailored to your character's kit, like say Ignacio with his CT shutdown, and then proceed to just have the AI not use the kit. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay, so as far as Lucian and Megistos' upgrades go, the challenge board and the login bonuses are going to take care of that, and the stuff is pretty easy to do, stuff you would do anyway. It's kind of nice. In the case of Magisto, I, I don't, I've never really used him. I only used him a short period in Global, so I can't really say. I think there's some elements of his kit that look kind of nice on paper, like I think his Gate 2 is pretty awesome, getting like range plus one and missile mod on an agility boosting skill. That's all good. How that actually translates to, in terms of like the execution, I, I don't know. I'm like, his split scaling makes me a little nervous, for example, but if, if any of you are users of Magistos or fans, definitely let me know how that works out. Lucian, on the other hand, I will 100% vouch for this guy. Both back in the day for Global, he was one of my charge-up nuke people, and even on this account, to this day, he's still a valued member just because I've not had great luck in terms of gotcha for wind, so a team with like Naju, Dark Nyx, Natalie, and Lucian has helped me a lot in any case where I need to clear with all wind units. So he's perfect for just filling a void that's created by, you know, just a little bad luck. So aside from that, there are events everywhere. There is the rerun tab. In this, you're going to find all of the coin shop and just kind of your standard normal stage, then EX, EX plus hell. A standout here is Vettel and Judith. And then I would definitely say Selliers too, because just for being so free to play apparently. That's not the extent. There's so many other great units. I just there's not really enough time to talk about everything because that's that's a really important thing, right? Because when everything under the sun is rerunning, odds are depending on how much free time you have to play this game, you you might not get to everything. And because of that, I would recommend first and foremost the characters that you are currently using that you currently have enlightenment invested into them. Those ones, any upgrade for them, be it a job plus, you know that one pretty much speaks for itself but or it could just be a gear that would help them out a lot that's what deserves your immediate attention and that could also extend to genesis as far as unique totems so aside from that the next priority would be planning for the future characters that you really would like to pull 
or characters that you have that just you're not quite there in terms of soul shards either because they're a normal pool unit and you're just still farming them slowly or they're a nightmare to raise kind of character like a genesis unit so you're basically just starting from zero and just running with like whatever you can grab with genesis coins or gotcha coins or the soul port just thinking in terms of you might not have them there yet but anything that can help them as soon as you get there and then after that I would prioritize if you're coming from global anything that you're going to be really familiar with because you'll naturally clear that much much faster if you happen to have the mechanics of a map memorized or at least partially memorized you're going to be able to speed through that you'll know which units to use already and you won't have to spend nearly as much time experimenting now luckily for the most part especially when it comes to unlocking job pluses clearing hell levels is not going to be necessary for that goal you you'll you get by just fine on an ex plus especially if you're kind of multitasking and just just let the ex plus auto repeat a few times and then you'll be good to go just buy out the tokens and the equipment pieces and then you're good to go you can move on to the next one i am making it sound like such a chore <laughs> i guess at that point though if you are trying to really really maximize your efficiency it kind of is work at that point it's just work that has a fairly high potential to be fun. One thing that I wouldn't prioritize too much is the dragon event unless you're chasing after soul shards of a particular character and that's just because that story is ongoing so it's fairly reliable that it'll be back soon because you know they're, they're gonna want to release the next chapter and thus the new character to go along with it because hype all that. So definitely I wouldn't worry too much about when the next dragon event is going to be because I'm, I'm sure it'll be soon enough so yeah that is all i've got to say oh wait wait no one more thing don't stress out too much about the babel chronicles job pluses you have to have the unit borderline maxed out if not really maxed out and you know ruined out really really high stat checks so if you're not there yet i just wouldn't worry about it too much just try and catch it on the next rerun so that is everything i've got to say about events and all that so let's go ahead and take a look at the banners. Okay, so as far as banners go this week, it's pretty straightforward. There's some good coin banners, and then there's some good guaranteed five-star banners. Uh, they're somewhat mutually exclusive in that if you want dragon stuff, then the coins, coin banners are the way to go. And then if you are more just looking for more guaranteed five-stars, not necessarily guaranteed limited, so that'll I'll come up in a little bit. So... As far as the pools go, I think these are excellent. If you're looking to burn a couple of discount tickets and you've got at least one of these units, then I would definitely recommend burning them that way because you can help raise characters with scarce shards. And then if you get really lucky, then it's a good time to, to pull a featured unit when, it's, when the pool is that good. There's also this memento banner, and I, I want to talk about this for a little bit because I, I don't think it's something that I've talked about in a lot of detail. Because coming from global, the standard was just nine step with a selector, and this is very, very similar, except that it's a ten step functionally. If you're looking at the coins, you get a hundred per step, and if you get a thousand of them, you can buy a selector with the pool on it. So that's basically a 10 step with a selector assuming that's the only thing you use the coins for i think that's the only thing the coins are really worth using if you're gonna go all the way especially when you can choose the pool i think that's extra nice because unless your luck is just absolutely horrible chances are you'll get at least one or two featureds in the course of pulling and and if you don't get the one that you want then that's what the coins are for so if you are working on a dragon unit especially if there's somebody maybe like lindrake Melville is quite helpful as well. Or you just if you want to get Claybell's skin, I wouldn't blame you. So definitely not not a bad banner. I think it's a little bit overshadowed by the coins and stuff, but if mementos are your focus and dragons are your priority, then then this is an excellent banner. Lil is rerunning, so if that is a unit that you want to get, then definitely a good time, although it will be quite expensive. And then there are the five star five guaranteed. So there's one for units and there's one for mementos. Now it's nice to have the five stars be guaranteed because pulling and getting zero five stars sucks. So eliminating that as a possibility is nice, but it is important to keep in mind that you cannot get version twos or dragons. So if that's something you really care about, that's an immediate exit. And then also it's just dicey in the sense that you don't have a guaranteed limited. Odds are if you pull a couple of times, you 
probably get at least one or two, but who it's going to be, it's, it's a pretty big pool. So I would definitely think about that. But in general, though, it's it's not awful on its face. So yeah, that is about it for the banners. Everything else is pretty much just gears and other stuff that is not worth the time. And that, given how insane this week is, <laughs> time is quite scarce. So the last thing to do is I will show you the poll that made me very, very happy. Okay, so this is the one that I chose just because the only unit I own in this pool is Melvilli. And I wouldn't say no to 100 shards of her. The other one's good too, but I have Zaphyrus, Karnet, and Saria. And Zaphyrus and Karnet, I'm pretty good, at least good enough on shards for them. So that was my thinking here. So luckily, very first step had something good in it. That's pretty rare for me. Most of my step ones tend to be really, really bad. So, you know, at this point, I, I didn't know what was going to happen yet. So I was thinking, you know, could still just be a normal pool unit. But, you know, I, I wouldn't waste your time with that. So I've, I've given away the game a little bit, but... The question is going to be, in what way will this be good? Will this be a character I absolutely love? Will it be just a kind of broken, bonkers unit? Um, or will it be um, Lorium? <laughs> Actually, Lorium is pretty cool. Any unit with crit heal, I automatically like them. So there's that. So now is the moment. It was a long couple of seconds when it happened. But I can say safely that it was none other than Claybell. You know, this was a lot easier than it was for me on Global, where I went, like, way too many steps into a really risky situation and just kind of got lucky, but spent a lot of gems to do it. <laughs> Claybell for 500 gems, I will 100% take it. I did do a second step, but there's nothing on it, so we're not going to waste time on that. So if you are summoning this week, I wish you good luck, and I will see you all next time.